First of all, $500,000 upgrade to replace aging sewer lines and manholes along the upper five mile area. Remind po folks where that is and why that works. Five maybe. miles almost runs through the center of, uh, of Anderson and it is the backbone, it's the mothership, it's where everything else springs off from. And so we've been rehabilitating that as we could in phases and we've been primarily doing it with grant money. And thanks to legislative delegation, we've got some more grant money and we're applying it to that half million dollars that will go a long way in helping us uh, complete our goal of rehabbing that whole sewer line. And that'll save a lot of money. Not and we'll save a whole lot of money stuff. because when you have water trickling into those sewer lines, you have to pay for that water to be treated just like you do dirty water. And then another 500000 for the three bridges and Sealy Road uh, transmission mains. Where is this and why does it need See the roads up in the Powdersville area and there's a whole lot of work that needs to be done in that area and we're very blessed to, to receive these monies to begin work on that area. Okay, and then the... Um, the uh, and that's Powdersville Water Company, by the way. $500,000 to install transfer pump and make upgrades to the Anderson Regional Joint Water System. Tell people what transfer pump is and why they need Well, memory. transfer pump is literally what it is, transfers water from here to there. And that was done by Anderson Joint Regional. They got a nice grant. We're very happy for them because they supply the bulk of the water for Anderson, even to Williamston, to other parts of the county. They also supply it to Clemson University, just about everywhere. So anything that they can get helps keep water rates lower. And the other one was 444500 for the Mill, Mill Village water line replacements in Williamston. Uh, any idea how old those old lines are being replaced? I for? would imagine that they've been there since the mill was the first established. A lot of those lines are clay. They disintegrate over time. So that's a real good lick for the town of Williamston. And I know they'll put it to good use. Well, if you don't have any water, nobody's coming here. And we're not, we're not going to be here. And if you don't have sewer, then you're not going to be a very big company. And you're not, you may locate if it's you and uh, Buster and Fred, but when it gets a little bit larger than that, you need to have a sewer line before you can locate. Or if you're going to have a big commercial enterprise, you're going to need sewer. So water and sewer are critical. They're like the blood vessels and the lymph nodes of what you need to have a thriving economy. And you got to have, if you don't have it, you're not going to have it. We will open bids on exit 14 next week. So we're excited to see where... Those bids come in, we're hoping we get a low number and uh, so we can finally get that behind us, get construction started and put that to bed because exit 14 is ready to blow up in a good way with things I think people in Anderson County will find attractive. Any update on the traffic study around the proposed Bucky's at Liberty Highway exit? Bucky's gave us a million dollars. We gave the million dollars to SCDOT to begin doing those environmental studies and engineering studies to give us a firm estimate that will allow us to pursue other monies. But, and, and remember, in remembering this, and that Bucky's is actually putting more than a million dollars in it, they're gonna put millions of dollars in it. So I think that's important because you don't get too many people coming here and saying, look, we'd like to be here and we know there's gonna be an expense on an interchange that already was outdated and not used and so, uh, here's some money. Let's see if we can't put this money together. You can use our money to match other money. and Let's get this done. Maybe. But we also need it for Sunbrella because you know there's a 100,000 square foot expansion. What is it? A mile maybe I from that intersection? Out there. And then you have that housing development that's going right over there. And then you've got another person over there that's going to put a spec building. So, I mean, it was bad before Bucky's came and it needs to be replaced. Any, any wild hair guess about how soon Bucky's could start building out there? 24, 25, if, if the earliest, because that bridge is what's gonna take a long time. That's what the deal is. The council just approved new FedEx distribution center in South Carolina, 81 North Evergreen Road, $45 million investment, and at least to start 12 jobs, though the salaries look to be north of $25 an hour. How can they run something that big with 12 people? Well, because it's going to be primarily for distribution, should help us get our packages a lot sooner, and we should get better service. And again, this is what they're starting off with, and so we're excited they're here. Uh, we think we're going to see more distribution centers popping up around Anderson, and they're clean, neat, and they pay a lot of tax money. Any new announcements from TTI? I lose track. They're building so fast. They are still doing R&D and still working on the Moore factory and have more things in, in the pipeline. And as you know, they gave us the old TTI facility out on 28, which we've already filled up. 
but they're still renting a portion of it and paying the county market rate rent for that. So in our conversations yesterday, they need to stay here just a little bit longer because their construction is slowed down a little bit, just like everybody else's, because we cannot get stuff. Probably the biggest thing that you're going to see in that area is going to be housing. I think you're going to see some real, uh, real interesting houses and concepts coming to that area that aren't currently in Anderson. And I think it could be as many as 3,000, but it's going to be a, a special project and that's in its early stages. We've just announced some road paving and scattered around the county. SEDOT has some large projects. So all of that's finally coming together. And right now is when you pave. You don't pave in January, you don't pave in February. This is the paving season, just like it's time to grow tomato season, it's paving season. Uh, we'll be putting together an amalgamation of, of money from the federal government, the state government, and monies that we have. We uh, voted to pave a road, council voted to pave a road the other night. So that's one of the top priorities that council has is paving roads. Plus people also know that we also build our own bridges. So we have bridges under construction and we're anxiously looking to see how much money we can get from somebody else other than Anderson County to help pay for that. So as long as they're throwing money away, not away, but throwing it to projects, we have a nice stack of projects that are the big word everybody always use shovel ready. Well, here we are. So we, we can be first in line with that. You know, the new stage at the amphitheaters face delays because of lack of materials. Any update on that? Well, this is what we are hoping that's going to happen. We hope that they start on that next week. We got to be finished by the end of October because we have two huge concerts coming September 1st celebrate Anderson and a concert three or four days before that. But that band shell is going to change the shape and who we get out at that civic center and get out at that amphitheater. And I think it's going to be a huge improvement. And I think it's something the people in Anderson County will be proud of. Again, that was a material holdup or we would already probably have it built. We couldn't get the parts. And right next door, Kidventure 2.0 is looking like a real playground now. Um, I guess materials and weather pushed it from Memorial Day to July, is that right? Yes, but there's a slim chance we might get open earlier than July 4th. And again, it just depends on, on materials. And close by the Memorial Wall uh, at the property next to the Recycling Center mm -hmm. is, in, is they're putting up plaques now. It's a nice tribute. Remind people how this developed and why it's such a good thing for the county to be involved in. But Well, we have people, unfortunately, sometimes people don't claim their loved ones remains and it may be people who have no loved ones all kinds of different circumstances but we cremate those remains and those cremated remains were in the coroner's office primarily in deputy coroner don mccowan's office so don had a good idea that we need to do something but we need to do something that is significant and honorable so we started talking, came up with the idea of a wall, and that wall is going to be up there, and it looks down into a valley, and we're putting everybody's name there. And as soon as we get some more names up there, we're going to have our first ceremony, and we're going to give these people a proper funeral and send-off. So we're probably going to do like 25%, 25%, and try to have some kind of ceremony every three or four months. The ashes can be scattered there in the graveyard right behind it. you got the place already in place for there. Yes, so. we do. The Greater Anderson County Fair just left. There were monkeys, I assume. And my understanding is it was one of the best ones they've had in recent memory, and I'm told you made multiple visits. What made this year's such a success? Well, I think people just are ready to get outside, and, uh, it, and a fair is always dependent on good weather. And uh, according to the fair people, this was the second best fair that we've had. The one right after COVID, I mean, when everybody was screaming to get out, but they were very pleased, we were very pleased, and it was a clean, clean fair, and lots of people enjoyed it, and looking forward to next year, there's some things we need to tweak, possibly some things we can do to make handicapped parking better, uh, move a few things around, so, you know, we learn every year when, when they come in. And the track from the Civic Center to Anmed North is, you continue to watch that progress. They're working on that thing, seems like day and night. Are they still looking at the end of summer to be completed? Or? Yes, but we have a meeting coming up and off the top of my head on June the 1st, we're gonna have people from Clemson University, from town of Pendleton. Uh, we've invited people from Anderson University. Uh, a whole bunch of people to see if we can really jumpstart 
kick off a serious trail system. I mean, people may not remember this, but there was an old railroad called Piedmont Northern, or as people called it, the PNN, or as some people called it, the Poor and Needy. But anyway, uh, one of the lines almost the right of way extends from almost the Anderson University campus and on up into Anderson all the way to Belton. We're going to take a look at that. We're going to take a look at how we can connect ourselves to Pendleton and to maybe Fance Grove because Clemson wants those trails to get more use. So if we can come up with an idea, at least jumpstart an idea to get some of these things to actually happen, I think it's going to be a great benefit for Anderson County, for our residents, for people who live here, but I also think it will continue to attract uh, visitors to our town. And, you know, we love people to visit and leave all their money. And I know Mills on Wheels uh, poker run now called the Hartwell Lake Charity Run is set to be at Green Pond early June. It's another first for Green Pond, and um, Lori Ashley is pretty excited about that. Well, Meals on Wheels approached us, and we thought it was a great idea because, again, as I say every month, we want Green Pond to be more than just a place where you put your fishing boat in. If we have those plays out there, there's something else. Uh, we were out there yesterday. You had a whole bunch of people out there just laying around the beach, you know, getting a suntan, jumping in the water every once in a while. You mentioned fishing tournaments. They're booked out. Not just years ahead, not just months ahead. Yeah, right? I mean, it, I mean, there's something going on all the time, and we were very happy. And we're also very happy that Crescent won the state championship. So we've got some people who know how to fish in Anderson County, because we are the bass fishing capital of America. Any other news out of Green Pine? I know people keep whispering about a conference center eventually being built out there. What would it take the, to put that in motion? What it would take is if we didn't have to build a jail. And right now, the council... Uh, <laughs> Is committed. Well, the jail's not going to be out there, though. It's be jail's <laughs> not going to be out there. But that jail is going to take up a lot of uh, money. But one of the good things about the jail council has looked at this, and we have some infrastructure payments that are going to be rolling off because we're paid off. So instead of raising taxes to build a jail, we'll be able to apply those monies to the construction of a jail. But we want it to be a jail that has mental health treatment ca capability court capability. We want to be able to take federal prisoners because you make a lot of money from the federal government if you're able to house federal prisoners. Right now, uh, we have no place for young people to go, and we would like to have that because there's not many places that you can, you can take juveniles. So we'd like to have that facility. Would it make the jail pay for itself? Absolutely not, but would it help greatly on the operating cost? It certainly would. So and we're looking into all of that. And the plan you've got is built for growth, so this won't have to be yes. resisted for a while, yes. right? Yes, yes. We've been talking to some private in, private entities who are looking to buy old private uh, boat landings and things like that and turn them into camping areas and... We're excited about that because we never have enough places for people to camp. And so this would be just another thing that would bring people into Anderson County and help our fishing industry and gas and restaurants and everything else. How about updates on Mountain View Park, that dock repair replacement? Maybe still, we need a concrete dock out that's there. That's still in process. Yeah. And and that, remind people where that is and why, why it's That important. is the only landing that Anderson County has on Lake Russell. It is at the very bottom of the county geographically. And we have had, for years, horrible vandalism because it is pretty isolated. But it's beautiful and quiet. It is absolutely beautiful. And Lake Russell's beautiful. There are no houses on Lake Russell. So if you want to go for a nice, peaceful boat ride or go fishing or something, Lake Russell is really nice. How about going into late spring and summer or any other park updates? I know the council did a identified those needs a couple of years ago. Any, any upgrades? Councilman Davis is about, well, he's finished up his study, but we're, uh, Councilman Wright's doing one, Brett Sanders is doing one in his district, Ray Graham's doing one in his district. All the council's yeah. eventually going to do that. Two, yep, two, all of them are doing that. What do you want? I mean, these are driven by people. This is not, well, this is what I think. They're people-driven ideas on what they want for recreation. But uh, I guess the biggest one we're trying to finish right now is our playground at the airport, which will be an aviation-themed playground. And we've had two wonderful people make generous donations. If we had another $100,000 in generous donations, we could get that thing in quick because it's already designed. Where we're going to put it's flat as a pancake. The drive, the parking's already there because it's ADA approved. 
So we just need money to buy that playground equipment that is aviation related and it's right beside the runway so you can go out there and play and watch planes come and take off. And some of the big ones like Dolly Cooper Park had their big event and they're now ready to launch Saluda River Rally. Yep, Saluda River Rally is fixing to come up and Rhythm on the River was a huge success. Probably had four or 5,000 people there so that went well. Anything new or different planned for this year's market? No, but I mean, we have a lot of people who want to go to our market. We don't have enough space to do it, but I still like that idea of putting it on Main Street. I've seen it done. I've been to Marion Square in Charleston when they do that. I know what they do in downtown Greenville. And since we're Greenwood all... Greenwood does it. Spartanburg Greenwood does, does it. it. And so we're trying to bring people downtown, make, make this a gathering spot. And so, hey, the farmer's market has served us well, but there might be time for a revamp. We are the perfect mix and blend of manufacturing, which we have proportionally more of than just about anybody else, but we're have still heavily dependent on agriculture. We have a thriving agricultural economy in Anderson County, and both seem to coexist quite well. So after nine months, how would you grade the countywide EMS system? I'm very pleased. I am very pleased with that paramedic system. It has been a smashing success. It's doing better than we even thought it was going to do. We're probably hitting 90, 94% response time under our self-imposed limit of nine minutes and 50 seconds. We had a meeting this week with the uh, committee at the hospital on how we're doing, because one of the things that we wanted to make sure was good was when we pick you up, and we don't really pick you up, we get there and stabilize you, and the ambulance does the actual carrying. But what can we do on the scene to make sure when you get to the hospital, you're in better shape to be done something else to. And that seems to be working well, and we still have people uh, clamoring to be a uh, paramedic when no place else in South Carolina has that problem. Do companies look at uh, things like EMS as a factor when you're recruiting? I can show you letters that we have received from TTI. I can show you letters we've received from Electrolux. They care very much about the people who work there, and they want to see a professional organization there to help them. But when you talk about what we do for EMS, I mean, there are other things that we do besides that. We go in and look at plants and say, you got problems here, and we've done that. Electrolux, we've done that. Other places, we've done that. With our emergency services division, and they actually go to these companies and say, yep, this is this, this is this, this and this. Hugely active during the coronavirus, but even more so now. People want uh, them to do active shooter training, all of these things. So we, try, we spend a whole lot of time trying to make sure that nothing bad happens. And we've got the best people in the world in those positions. They really care. And none of them know what 40-hour that week is. They do, they do not, and they don't want to. We have some more life science companies looking in our area since we seem to be increasingly popular for that. And we also have some more... And I'm hoping this comes to fruition in June, but we will become one of the national, if not international, centers on energy. And I'm hoping that comes to fruition, and I think it will. And so there's a lot of exciting things going on along those lines. But, I mean, you know, from the days when we had sewing plants to where we are now, to where we're able to keep Anderson people here, and which I think was always been a goal, for the county council is to, you don't have to leave here just to go find a good job or a challenging job or a job that can take you all the way to the top or you can start your own business here because this is a good place to do business. And sure, lots of people get out of school and they go away for four or five years, some 10 years, some 20 years, but they always seem to find their way back to Anderson. I could pay you $100 an hour. If I don't have health insurance for you or a retirement plan for you or anything for you like that, Yes, they look at every every project that they look at, that's taken into consideration. Are we No, it's not just dollar. You better be paying well, at least very well, but what's your insurance package? What's your benefits package? What's your retirement plan? All of that comes into play because we don't have to take anybody else. Any update on Equinox Mill cleanup? That mill project is only viable with tax credits, not tax credits that Anderson County issues, but tax credits that the state issues, which allows those developers to sell those credits because they're going to have to clean that whole mill up before they can do anything. And we think 
that they stopped them, but we think we were able, thanks to Senator Gamble and others, to get Equinox in under the old rules. So we're very excited about that, just like we're excited about what could happen with the old Abney Mill. We just uh, put out a request for a proposal on somebody to develop Toxway. Something special could happen there, and we've selected a firm, M. Peters Group, to do the development of that. They're the same people that are doing that fabulous job up in Newry and that zillion dollar investment in downtown Spartanburg. So they seem to like us and we certainly like them. So we're excited about that. If those critics come through, is there, I mean... They start tomorrow. Oh, okay. So five years from now, there may be something there? Uh, if those credits came through, there'd be something there in two years. But there's some things that are fixing to happen uh, in proximity to where we're sitting that I think it's going to make it a developer to want to do what we want to do. Upcountry Fiber is running broadband right now. I mean, they're up in the Pendleton area right now running it. Southern part of the county, Charter's running lines, AT&T's running lines. We have five grant applications in right now that we hope to hear for in June. So if we get those, the county has um, ARPA funds, American Relief funds that we're gonna put in there to match that. It's This grant program's called The Last Mile. So you're going to go X. Well, here, we'll give you some money to go X, sir. So we're working hard on that because we want everybody to have broadband. Will everybody always have broadband? I don't think so. But then I also think somebody's going to develop some kind of satellite, and all of this will be coming from the stars. Mm -hmm.